Do you remember Service Merchandise? Service Merchandise was a retail chain of catalog showrooms carrying fine jewelry, toys, sporting goods, and electronics that existed from 1934 to 2002. Welcome to Eric C Productions. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, please hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you get notified of my latest video that are posted daily. Thank you for watching and now back to the program. People in a hurry need a store that's convenient. Gramps of Nana shop at Service Merchandise. Sony's electronic sketch pad lets kids draw in 15 colors with graphics, even the alphabet. Just $89.97 at Service Merchandise. And look for a complete line of Sony Watchmen, including the FDL 3500. They start as low as $100 at Service Merchandise. Where to now? Sweetest! Sweet. Call for the Service Merchandise store nearest you. Service Merchandise's history can be traced back to 1934 to a small five and dime store founded by Harry and Mary Zimmerman in the town of Pulaski, Tennessee. After leaving the wholesale business, they would open Service Merchandise Inc., the first of what evolved into a chain of catalog showrooms opened in 1960. Prior to 1960, that enterprise grew into a chain of dime stores located in small Tennessee towns. Harry and Mary's son, Raymond Zimmerman, virtually grew up in the stores and began to work in one of them after attending the University of Miami and Memphis State University. After the family sold most of the stores to Coons, a variety store chain, the Zimmermans became variety store jobbers, a business in which they were still involved when they opened their catalog business in 1960. Warehouse in downtown Nashville, Tennessee became their first store. For 10 years, the Zimmermans operated the single outlet before entering two additional markets, Memphis and Chattanooga, Tennessee. During those years of limited growth, the company developed its business strategy and management team. The company incorporated in Tennessee in 1970. Prior to that year, most catalog showroom businesses were privately held and were often family-owned companies operating locally. In 1971, service merchandise began to keep its stock in a warehouse connected to each store and to sell merchandise from samples only. By 1972, the company was operating six showrooms. By mid-1974, Service Merchandise had 27 showrooms in 11 states in the South and Midwest and was the nation's third largest catalog showroom company. With most of its marketing dollars sunk into its catalog, the company distributed 1.9 million copies. In 1973, Raymond Zimmerman became Service Merchandise's president, while his father, Harry, assumed the post of chairman. Most company showrooms converted to point-of-sale electronic cash registers in the summer of 1973. The information recorded on each showroom's mini-computer could be transmitted via telephone wires to headquarters. Greater inventory control was the most important benefit of the new system. With each expansion, Service Merchandise sought to achieve maximum visibility by locating in high traffic locations, often near regional shopping centers. In 1975, Raymond Zimmerman once said that in Service Merchandise showrooms, jewelry accounted for only 3% of the total square footage. It represented 25% of the sales volume. In the late 1970s, the three largest operators, Best Products Company, Modern Merchandising Inc., and Service Merchandise, had always avoided any direct competition in a single market. But this began to change in 1979 in many major markets across the country. Part of what precipitated this change was Service Merchandise's 1980 withdrawal from creative merchandising and publishing a modern merchandising subsidiary that published the catalogs for the three largest chains and for the several smaller houses. By this time, the largest of the three chains, Service Merchandise, had sought the flexibility of being able to tailor its catalog to its own special needs. The move also saved money. 
From 1979 to 1982, the number of catalogs that the company mailed to customers remained constant at 6.5 million, thanks to service merchandise's tracking of its customers by zip code and by telling those customers in the least productive zip codes that if they wished to receive the catalog, they would have to inform the company. By 1982, sales per catalog were $150, compared to $80 just a few years earlier. Despite a recession, Service Merchandise managed to top the $1 billion mark in revenues in 1981. That year also marked the retirement of Harry Zimmerman as company chairman. He continued as honorary chairman and company director, and son Raymond then began to serve as both chairman and president. By that time, Service Merchandise had 116 outlets. By 1984, the company maintained 183 showrooms in 35 states. That year, it remained the second largest catalog showroom operator behind Best Products Company, although it was far more profitable than the leader. Service Merchandise was also a prominent sponsor of Wheel of Fortune. The retailer also provided some of the prices on The Price is Right. In the late 1980s, sales per store had stopped growing and operating expenses began eating away at the company's narrow profit margin. Maximizing the number of in-stock items had always been one of service merchandise's foremost priorities, but the company found itself with a growing number of out-of-stock items, which sent customers shopping elsewhere. In 1988, sales surpassed the $3 billion mark. By the 90s, the company lost market share in its housewares and electronic sectors to giant discounters such as Walmart, Bed Bath & Beyond, and later Best Buy and Circuit City. Although service merchandise was early to embrace the internet in the 1990s, generating tens of millions of dollars in sales, it was not enough to offset the damage done by the mega chain stores springing up nationwide. While in the process of changing its retail format, a group of creditors forced an involuntary petition for bankruptcy under Chapter 11 on March 15, 1999, seeking court supervision of the company's restructuring. The company later filed a voluntary Chapter 11 petition to improve relations with its vendors, as well as its creditors, in an effort to stabilize its business. Raymond Zimmerman, son of the original founders, who had been instrumental in the process of building the family business into a multi-billion dollar empire, resigned as chairman of the board in November 2000. The company subsequently attempted to pull itself out of bankruptcy once again in summer of 2001, but the economic downturn following the September 11th attacks proved to be a hurdle the company could not clear. With only 200 catalog showrooms left, the stock valued at less than one cent per share, and no profitability in sight, service merchandise ceased operations and shuttered all of its remaining stores by early 2002. Hey, if you just watched my video, thanks for watching. Hit that like button and please subscribe to Eric C Productions.